What the f All right, folks, so this is a uh, kind of abrupt start to a video, but I didn't want to film because this was a private sale situation and there was a little bit of drama attached to it, but fortunately none of that played out with me and I'll explain all that here in a minute, but right in front of me here is my new to me 1993 Dodge D250 Cummins turbo diesel 5.9 12 valve totally random impulse purchase it happened over the weekend uh, at an estate sale and out front i see this truck with a for sale sign on it and i figured it was going to be you know some outlandish price well the for sale sign said two thousand or best offer and as i look over the truck more one of the family members comes over and starts talking to me and gives me the rundown on the truck and basically it belonged to their parents you can see it there and the parents bought it years ago to haul a one of those slide-in campers in the truck bed, but their parents' health uh, declined and they never really used it, but they've had it now for many years, kept it maintained, just drove it around locally. And uh, well, the parents have passed on and so the truck was for sale. And I found out that it only has 80,000 miles on it which is very low for one of these trucks. Plus it's a pretty unique spec. You just don't find these things anymore. And when you do, they're usually used and abused. So this one's not perfect, but certainly very nice for what I paid for it. And it's worth quite a bit more than that, in my opinion. Uh, it's got brand new tires on it all around. Got a brand new battery. The thing fires right up. Some cosmetic issues that you'll see in a moment, but I ended up getting the truck for $1,000. Okay, so back home, the truck arrived, and uh, this is really my first time taking an in-depth look at this truck. I have not driven it. I haven't even started it on my own. When I looked at this truck Saturday at the estate sale, it was a very fast-paced situation. There was a lot going on at the estate sale. It was very busy, and I knew it had a small window to try to buy this truck before somebody else did, so... Uh, the old lady who was selling it, she fired it up for me on the estate sale day and I listened to it run for a couple of minutes and then we got down to talking numbers. So I never drove it. I just went off her word at a thousand bucks. I can't get hurt. The 80,000 mile Cummins turbo diesel is worth way more than that. The new tires all around the battery. So it's a no risk situation, but curious to see, of course, how she's going to run and drive. Hopefully she does. It did drive off of the flatbed, but, uh, you know, I've never seen this thing shift at a first. The one thing the seller told me on Saturday is that the brakes are weak. And they believe it's the master cylinder. I don't think it's a brake line because obviously it's a Florida truck. Frame is very clean. Got a few spots of weird surface rust, but not nearly enough rust down here that I would expect a brake line to be popped. Sorry about the wind, by the way. We got a storm coming in, so I'm trying to get this. Oh, actually, this is what I love about living out in the country. You see all that gray over there? That's rain. That's coming this way right now. That's, that's a lot of rain. I can hear the rain hitting the tops of those nursery structures there. The wind's picking up even more. Quick look on the outside before I get soaked. You can see this fender's damaged. I'll probably pull it off and just bend that back out temporarily. See how it looks and if I need to get a new fender, I probably will. Here comes the raindrops real quick. Here's this side. So cosmetically, she's uh, she looks like an old farm truck, you know? It's got some nice patina with the exception of the uh, roof rust and I guess right now will be a good time to see how much water gets in the truck so let me get in yeah here comes the rain yeah the door hits on that fender oh I just noticed this is broken oh my god it's not just the fabric it's the the entire the entire headliner piece is uh, hanging low. They were kind of short sellers. Obviously the headliner needs attention. That's because of all the water that's getting in here. This is my first time starting this truck and uh, I shouldn't need to uh, wait for the glow plug because it was just running. Came off the tow truck recently, but uh, we'll do it anyway, just in case.
<laughs> it fires right up. See, I didn't even see this because I never sat in it while I was running. It's got a brake light on, an ABS light. Yeah, the pedal is a bit low. I don't know though. That's pretty firm. It's not going down to the floor. Well, I'll figure it out. Now, they told me the AC works. I didn't check. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. It sure does work. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thousand dollar truck with cold AC, a diesel, a Cummins turbo diesel. This truck, if it was a gasser in this condition, I don't know, it'd probably be a couple thousand dollar truck. It's a three quarter ton turbo diesel. That changes everything. Steering feels nice and tight. Again, I haven't checked any of this. It's basically like an auction buy. Uh, I got the same look at it as I would have at an auction. Got to start it, see if the power windows work. This one does and it works well, as does that one. Power locks, sure do. So it's a extended cab. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, it's got the uh, it's got the sideways seats, jump seats. Does this work? Radio works. Appropriate song for the year of the vehicle. And of course, we've got the Grandpa Guardian Angel badge there. I'll leave that on there. I could use it. Uh, all right, let me pop the hood. I'll show you guys how she runs, and then we'll take it for its first drive. I love the sound of this thing. It sounds like a freaking school bus. Here's the rain now. I don't even know what to say about this one. I mean, this was just, this was so impulsive and so unexpected. Just estate sale runs. I haven't bought any vehicles from estate sales in a long time. Certainly didn't expect to leave with the wipers not work. Now that's a problem. Maybe we won't be going for a test drive. At least not right now. Well, let me at least try the transmission. I know it works because I've watched it come off the truck. Right into reverse, no problem. It always has to rain when I'm doing something. Right into drive. But will she move? Oh, it feels like uh-oh. Uh, I think I know what happened. I think the uh, tow truck driver put the e-brake on and it probably hasn't been used in a long time because it's Florida. We don't have any hills here. And I think it's stuck. Ah, oh, geez, what a great start, huh? All right, let me go out and investigate that. Okay, I'm under the truck and it appears that the e-brake cable for the passenger side is stuck. If you look, I can freely move. This side here, of course, the easy side is not stuck. This one is not doing anything. So I'm trying to, I'm loosening this up here to pop this out of the bracket here. That Obviously that runs all the way to the foot pedal on the truck. You push that down and it pulls these cables to engage the e-brake. And when you release it, the cables are supposed to return and release your brakes. But obviously, at the very least, this one's stuck. This one seems to be moving fine. I could put some vice grips or something on it and really give it a good yank or two and see if I can free it up. So I have the foot pedal cable separated from the e-brake cables here in the back and one of these does not look like the other. You can hear that it's jiggling so it's loose. The passenger side one, it's not budging. So I got a few options here, but I want to test drive this thing. I don't have the parts and I'm gonna to have to get them online, I'm sure. So I'll probably just end up cutting the cable. I just finished my ghetto fix for the stuck e-brake situation on the passenger side. Now I'm hoping the driver side isn't stuck as well. The cable didn't feel stuck, but maybe it's slightly stuck, we'll see. What I had to do, because when your e-brake is frozen, and you have drum brakes, you can't get the drum off. And I tried tapping on the backing plate. I tried spraying the cable. Just not to waste any more time, I went ahead and cut the e-brake cable. You can see it there. I cut it right where it goes into the backing plate. And that way, uh, wherever the seized up area of the cable was, I was sure I would get it. And uh, as soon as I did that, uh, all of a sudden, Boom, I was able to spin the rear wheel. I could feel that it freed up. So I haven't driven it yet. So here we go. 
You can see a little bit of rust down here as well. This truck needs a lot of metal work. That's awesome. Thing fires right up. All right, so let's put her in gear. Let's see what happens here. And now we're moving. Doesn't feel like the other e-brake cable is sticking. The brakes are definitely, they're low. The pedal has a lot of travel. I gotta watch, this thing is so long. Uh, it does stop. So I just need to be careful and stay far back from other traffic. So let me go ahead and get out here. All right, here we go. I'm gonna have to pull all the way out here just to close my gate. First drive, I'm way zoomed in. All right, first to second, four speed, so second to third. All right, so she goes through all the gears. Now, uh, I do remember now that the seller told me the speedometer does not work. Uh, let's hope the odometer does. It looks like it does. I see the uh, tenth spinning on the trip odometer, so that's good. Seems to drive well. Uh, just like an old truck. A fair, not horrible, but a little bit of slop in the steering for 80,000 miles. I would expect it to be a little bit tighter. Could be a pitman arm or something. And I definitely hear something rattling uh, underneath it. It could be something in the bed, but it feels like something underneath. Sounds like I'm driving an old Bluebird school bus. That's awesome. She does stop, but you gotta give her some time to do it. God, I just love listening to that, uh, <laughs> to that diesel, let me tell you. Super cool. Oh, the odometer does work. Uh, you know, just rolled over now to 81,947. So that's good. We know the miles are accurate. I gotta say, for a thousand bucks, it drives pretty well. Uh, the engine just seems to run perfectly. I think it deserves a proper restoration. I found a lot more nice examples, like fully restored, and I did rough ones when I did a quick search. And the nice examples are anywhere from 15 to 35,000. I'm only into this for a grand. I got a lot of wiggle room. All right, so unfortunately I didn't get it on video, but when I pulled back into my house, I noticed I had some smoke coming from this rear wheel here. Now I fixed the other side, passenger side. I thought this cable was fine. Obviously it was dragging a little bit. It wasn't completely seized, this parking brake. Uh, and I checked to confirm with my little temperature gun here, and the temperature was almost double. What do we got? Let's see. Yeah, it's cooled down several degrees, but this drum is about 100. And this one is almost 200. So obviously we got a problem there. So I'm going to do the same thing I did uh, with the air side. I knew, you know, the truck felt, once I got going a bit, it progressively felt like it had less and less power. Well, it's because parking brake was sticking in the back, obviously slowing the truck down and making the truck work harder because it was fighting that. Remember, I don't have a baseline. I've never driven this truck before, so it's not like I had it before the parking brake stuck. And then obviously, you know, you feel something's off when you're driving it. It's my first time driving it. It felt like it was going down the road okay, but... Toward the end of my drive, it felt like, geez, you know, this is feeling a bit sluggish. So parking brake sticking. Let me go ahead and take care of that. <sighs> All right, that was a mistake. Uh, I already know that it's cooking hot back there. I can smell it. Uh, I don't. I don't get it because it, look at it. I'm just rolling right now and drive, so it can't be that stuck. But once you get going, 
with speed that it really sticks unless it's something else besides the parking brake maybe there was already a pre-existing issue with that drum <laughs> now i gotta let this thing cool down a lot or I'm gonna have somebody bring me my tools because I, I don't want to just destroy those that drum brake on that side what a pain in the neck what the heck it's cooler This side's still cooler than this side, but when I checked it at the house, it was 100, it was almost 200, and now we're down to 120. So what's really going on here? I can tell, I can smell it, the burning smell of burning brakes, and you can feel the kind of wobble in the back. So now I'm confused. Okay, take a look at this. The smell, it's really coming from up here and uh 116 that's hotter holy crap wow i didn't i didn't expect that i mean could just have a sticking caliper and now i'm confused because i had the e-brake situation this is happening simultaneously. It, it throws you off a little bit when you're trying to diagnose what's going on. Now the brakes are really stuck. That front caliper, I don't think I'm having any issues with the rear anymore, but that front caliper, and I, mind you, I've been crawling like this since I left the gas station. I'm going, I don't know, because the speedometer doesn't work, but I'm, I'm going probably seven miles an hour. And uh, it, you can feel now that it's stuck. If I were to let off the gas, the truck will stop. It wasn't doing that before. So as typically happens with a sticking caliper, the hotter it gets, the worse it sticks until it's basically frozen. The truck gets delivered, tow truck driver engaged the e-brake and the rear brakes were stuck. But also we didn't know that there was a problem with this driver side front caliper. So I addressed both initially passenger rear parking brake and then we discovered that the other side was sticking and I'm sure this caliper was sticking at the same time but I wasn't even thinking about that because I didn't know there was a problem with that caliper the caliper though was starting to be stuck from the first drive and the second drive and me just driving it a few more miles to get diesel uh, that's all it took to get this caliper up to almost 400 degrees. It's completely stuck at this point. And that would also explain, I think, why this truck was driving so weird and stopping so weird. Brake fade and that caliper causing the truck to pull. Look at the pull to the left. If I let go of the wheel, it just turns immediately. So obviously we've got a stuck caliper in the front. I will order one. I will replace it. I will flush and service and bleed the brake system, change those parking brake cables, and we'll see where we're at from there. Maintenance to be expected on a truck that's been sitting around unused. Again, the sellers just were telling me that the brakes were weak. I think this is what was going on, and they were probably just driving it locally, a mile here, a mile there. Brakes felt funny, but never drove it far enough to uh, discover that the caliper was sticking. That's gonna do it for this video. I gotta order that caliper, but that's my $1,000 Cummins turbo diesel. Overall, obviously, it seems like a good truck, just uh, has some deferred maintenance, getting passed by a friggin' RV here. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for the next one. Let's get this thing sorted out and I'll figure out what to do with it from there.